All right, well, welcome back to Hockey Doc Talk, guys. Here, we're having a new format this year. We're going to um, have more video on the Hockey Doc Talk show. Um, so you'll be able to get it from the podcast, from iTunes, and you'll also be able to go to YouTube, our YouTube account, and be able to download and watch the interviews that we're going to have. We're going to go around to our local schools and all the local hockey clubs here and actually get some more information on what's going on in the local Northern Virginia DC area with hockey and how it's upscaling. Um, and today what we do is we, we, we have our first coach here on the show and I'm proud to say I actually met him during a lecture and we just hit it off because again, hockey family is small here in Northern Virginia. And um, so let me bring to the show Grady Little. He's the coach of Langley High School's hockey program. And uh, Grady, um, tell us a little bit about you know, your, your, whole, um, your whole hockey program over there at Langley. Well, first, uh, thank you for having me. I greatly appreciate yeah. uh, you having me in today yeah. and anything that I can do to help grow hockey as a whole in this area. I'm more than happy to do it, and I love what you're doing with your whole facility here. It's, it's absolutely amazing. I was definitely taken aback when I walked in and, and learned that this is not just your, your typical chiropractor's office. Right. It's so, so much more. So, I, thank you. You know, I'm, I'm glad I met you last week, but I'm, I'm upset that I didn't meet you a couple right, of years right, prior. Right. That's what everyone but, says. Right. Um, but anyways, uh, so. I'm the head coach at uh, Langley High School. Uh, I've coached there for about five years now, okay. um, and it was actually a very cool situation that I, you know, came about where uh, actually my coach in high school, Rob Factoro, he was the initial head coach at Langley when the during the inception of the NVSHL when they started All right. back in like 2003, somewhere around there. But he was the original coach, and then I always stayed in touch with him, always respected him, and as I grew up, uh, you know, he brought me on board as an assistant coach first and then uh, five years ago he handed the team over to me so it was really kind of cool to be there under playing under him and then take the team over from him um, but it's uh yeah it's just a, it's high school hockey and as we were talking before in this area it doesn't get the the same recognition as all the other school sports it doesn't it doesn't and that and that and that's one of the reasons why and the man behind the camera is rob g and papa from rebel run sports guys and um so you know he him and my wife gave me the idea to to take it to the next level right and this is what i wanted to do because i think that that our our hockey, our high school hockey here is getting overlooked. Not, not, you know, and when we put the podcast and the, um, together, it was to get information on injuries to our hockey players out there uh, across the nation, across the world, um, mostly because it was getting overlooked. You know, everyone, like we've talked to off camera, everyone's about football, baseball, and that's great, but nobody was paying attention to hockey. Right. Nobody was paying attention to hockey. Now we're getting a little bit more notoriety here in the, in the, in the Northern Virginia area, but um, definitely want to take it to the next level for the, uh, as I call it, the unsung heroes, right? The ones that go out there and play um, with a passion and, and have a love for the sport. So um, tell me about your journey in hockey. Now, I know you played in the juniors. Tell, let me, uh, what, what teams did you play for? Uh, so my history in hockey, I started Playing, well, I always had the, the interest in it. I always you know, loved watching hockey on TV. I right. came from uh, a bit of a hockey family where my uncle was the, the head coach at Minnesota Duluth oh, wow. uh, for a long time. Wow. And, you know, I had gone to games there, I'd seen that, I'd had the interest. And it was all, before the rest and rink opened, we didn't have much available in the area to go skate, to go even, you know, start picking up a stick and puck and, and doing anything like that. But once, you know, rest and finally opened, then, you know, I got enrolled in there initiation program and just oh, so you go way back oh yeah oh yeah since <laughs> they, yeah since they opened back. yeah I think day one I was there um, but you know I it was that that feeling when you go on the ice and right. you get that, that burst of cold air and it was you know just took me in instantly and I was never able to, to get off the ice if I was off the ice I was just playing in the driveway with a, a stick and a ball and all that stuff so I, I grew up playing uh, in Reston uh, and progressed from there. I played at Langley, uh, and then after high school, I went on to play uh, for the the Washington Junior Nationals out of uh, we were playing out of Bowie, which wow. is yeah, that was always a good time to drive to Bowie during rush hour. Well, that's you know some of the, some of our, our listeners out there that are getting into hockey. Their 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 um, parents are trying to figure out what what organization and what's close to my house. Um, the one thing, and you just mentioned it, is that. <clears throat> 
you're going to drive and you're going to know all the rinks in your yeah. local 35 to 50 mile oh, yeah. radius. Oh yeah. And it, and you may practice in one, but you may play in another. It, it'll, <clears throat> excuse me, they'll consistently change, right? Yep. So, so you guys were traveling all the time, though. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hogging a lot of miles on the car, and then after that, I uh, I went down to El Paso, Texas, of all places, and played a little hockey on the border, which was a, a very, very unique and awesome experience. What team was that? That was the Apostle Rhinos. Wow, the Apostle Rhinos. Now, now tell me about about that experience. So, from a junior level. What did you guys have for you? I mean, did you did you have a, 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 um, a your own skate sharpener? Did you got your own medic? Your own um, ATC strength and conditioning? Yeah, we had. I mean, we we got a, a ton of amenities, and they've since grown down there. You know, right. I still follow them and keep track of what they're doing. But uh, back in kind of that that was their inaugural season, right. uh, 2006, 2007, and it was it was really neat to kind of be one of the pioneers for the the team down there. Uh, but we did have a lot of great resources. We had this this rink that I was telling you about off uh, off camera. Right. That was a, a converted equestrian center, and it was it was literally a barn, but it was perfect for you know junior high like that you know rough and rough and tumble hockey right. old school style and that place would be packed every night you have a military base down there it would be filled with soldiers coming to uh, you know have a dollar beers and, and things like that so the environment itself is awesome uh, we had amenities like a, a team bus um, a team equipment we had uh, sponsorships with Reebok so we got a bunch of gear and stuff like that uh, and yeah I mean skate sharpeners, all that stuff. But Excellent. in that year, the the rink hadn't been approved to uh, build the locker room okay. on yet. So we had this circus tent, this huge circus tent in the corner of the rink. And that was our, our locker, locker room. room. Yeah. Wow. And it, it was always, we were always told it's going to be, you know, this is only, you know, right. for the first month and then we're going to start construction. And it'll be, you know, three weeks after that. And exactly. then it was like, Oh, it got pushed till, you know, around Christmas, of course. And then, you know, be ready by playoffs. And then just, you know, by the second year, I think they, they got it up and running. But, uh, since then they've, you know, had a, a new team bus or got a new team bus with, you know, bunks, Xbox, right. uh, you know, Dish TV, all that Everything. stuff, yeah. Um, and they built a, a training facility uh, as their workout gym, bought a skating treadmill. And, you know, they've always had doctors on staff, doctors at games that would be there to, uh, you know, tape you up and take Good. care of all that stuff. Good. Now tell me a little bit about, so during your career, did you have many injuries or not much? Yeah, <laughs> yeah too many. <laughs> How much time we got yeah. <laughs> today? So I could go for a while here. What, uh, was the, what was the most common one that you that you saw the team suffer from usually? Um, it was a lot of times, and again, I fall right into this category as mm -hmm. well, but but shoulders and concussions, okay. for sure. Right. Um, and, it would, and I think a lot of that is just not taking the time to properly rehab yourself and right. get yourself taken care of and back to 100% before you get back on the ice right. and you know I for myself I've uh, had five shoulder surgeries and countless concussions I think you know I'm off of two hands if I'm trying to count them but it was always you know I had this mentality that if if I don't get back out there I have you know 25 other people who can take my spot on the Lost. ice yeah, you lose and it. yeah so you know and so that's it's either tough it out or lose your spot so. exactly well tell me a little bit about the concussion stuff so so now the concussions are big right they're right. big in the media we do a lot of concussion work here in the office as well tell me what tell me the difference of what you're seeing now um, from your days playing and the concussions in that era with the concussions now at Langley High School. Right, and you know, there, when I was playing, there really was no concussion protocol, right. except if you thought you had one, then it's kind <laughs> it of like, like, look how many right, fingers are right, right. there. Yeah, they you know, do that test, and it was just usually, you know, as a, when I was growing up in Reston on, with the Raiders, it was usually a, you know, an untrained parent that was on the bench, and you know, close your eyes, and then you know, open them and look at the light, and we'll see if your pupils dilate. <laughs> exactly. but, and you know, do you know where you are? you know right. who the president is all that stuff and you're like oh you pass so if you feel like you can play you go back yeah, out there yeah right. uh, and so yeah so I'm sure there were a few times that I went back out and I definitely shouldn't oh, have sure but now there's uh, a, a new protocol in place and I know with, uh, with the wrestling team that I coach that we have trained spotters they go through a class and it is a parent and it's not somebody in the medical field but they do have to go through some training for this and if a player shows concussion like symptoms or it just even takes a, a hit that looks questionable yeah. then the spotters are there they come over to the bench um, and they have a baseline reading yeah. of you know a test done prior to right. that the season starting and if the kid is you know 
borderline on, on not being at the same score of his, his baseline test, then he's done uh, until he can go get cleared by a doctor. Wow. And it, it's fantastic, you know. It's totally, totally I, different, night and day, right? Right, right. Night and day. So, and I, I actually know that person, um, Kaki is her name, right? Right, right, right. Kaki yep. and her, and uh, there was another mom who devised the program that I met with Kaki. We talked about the different protocols and how her, how the, um, how that organization had just surpassed everybody in this area. Yeah, you know, they, they're they're the model organization to follow for for the concussion Good. protocol. I'm, so. I'm super happy that somebody took that initiative yeah, to, to go exactly. out and do that. And, and those take are two moms. I mean, I don't think they even have, I don't think they had health training at all, like medical training or any of that stuff. I think they were they were just very concerned parents and trying to and, and trying to help the not just the kids but the organization right? right from from all aspects, legal and and trying to get the player back out there quicker. Right. Okay. When I think I don't think it'll help the sport grow too if you know there, there's more of this stuff in place because I do think that times hockey does get a bad rap as though that's a that's a violent sport. Right. Uh, you know, my son's friend plays hockey and he's had a concussion. He you know he tries to eat through his nose now. Right. Um, exactly. But <laughs> uh, but you know it, it's I think if, if you have these procedures in place to show people that you know this is taken seriously amongst the the hockey community and that there are systems to make sure that you know things don't progress in a way. That that they shouldn't, that it's gonna help the sport grow. People are gonna be a little bit more lenient on letting their kids try the sport when they otherwise wouldn't. Right, exactly. No, that, and, that, and that's great info. Um, so how are you conditioning your players during the off season then so that these type of injuries, you're, you're less likely to see a lot of these type of injuries? So, I mean, honestly, with the, the high school league, as we were talking about before, it doesn't kind of get the same recognition as the other school sports okay. do. Um, where, you know, football teams have training camp uh, right. you know, before school starts and they can make sure their kids are are getting into good physical shape and all of that with not having the facilities at the school for for hockey it's you kind of leave it up to the kids to, and trust that they're to doing do their their own, own things right. you know by themselves because you can't afford the the ice time otherwise to keep things going or have a training camp throughout the summer so it's kind of on their own accord and but you you have good some good players because i mean i was looking at last year's stats and i and correct me if i'm wrong the the NVS HL plays ten games, right, right? Right. And so you're you're you guys were seven seven wins, two losses, and one tie. Yep. That's, that was pretty good. You guys were in second. Um, who was who's number one in that in that league? Uh, in Together our division, there. Madison, I believe, Madison finished uh, ahead of us. Yeah. Uh, and it's. Honestly, in, in when you look at the standings, it, I feel like it, they don't always show the, the whole truth right. because there is not much parity okay. within the league, and the schedule is kind of based on w how you did the season before. Exactly. And you know the whoever sets the schedule, they don't know what players are not coming back and what players are. So when they're you know you could have had a great season, but you had 15 seniors, and now you have a brand new crop of freshmen, right. and you're going to be playing you know the the league's top teams for all 10 games, and that makes it very very difficult. So uh, I saw two of your players were nine. Kevin Wang scored 19 goals. Thomas 18 goals. Yep. So you've got some. Oh yeah. I mean, they're, they're some elite scores over yeah, there. Yeah, we definitely do have some some very good players. Um, and do they play travel? Do they play juniors? So actually, both of them did play travel. Okay. And I believe both of them last year did not play. They they only played for Langley. Okay. So that was their main focus. They right. they're both terrific players. They didn't lose a step. So wow. you know, I, I'm I'm happy they, you know, self for selfish reasons that they didn't play travel hockey because that got me their full commitment. Exactly. Now are you gonna lose any seniors this year? Uh, Kevin was a senior, so we're losing him. Okay. Um, we lost uh, a handful as a, of others as well. Okay. All but, right. So it's a it's is it a rebuilding or I uh, no, I, I, I think we're gonna be a very strong team next okay. year. I, I'm very optimistic. Excellent, excellent. And you know when I was when I was doing some of my research, I saw that your school has a, a lot of medical staff there. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, how does that medical staff even come to to the hockey games? No, no, no we have zero medical staff at the okay. hockey games aside from any parents who might work in the medical field. Right. Right. And you know, luckily for us, we do have a, a few parents who are you know doctors, orthopedists, right. etc. Right. So it's it's great when they're there because right. again, if somebody gets hurt, then I'm that guy that has to run out on the ice exactly. and I have no medical training. Exactly. <laughs> so it, it kind of just becomes this dialogue between me and this poor kid that right. that's hurt, like. 
What, what's not feeling well? Yeah, what, what's exactly. hurting you? And, and where's uh, that? Can, 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 you, can you get off the ice? <laughs> That's all we want. Yeah, we yeah. want to keep playing, get right, off the yeah, ice. Yeah. So if you can get it back to the bench, you know, we can maybe call a parent over to help you out. But That's what always happens. And when I run out on the ice, I'm always like, just lay there, lay there. And they're like, why? It's just in the break, right? Everyone right. needs a break. Let's figure out what's going on, yeah. right? So, but yeah, that's that's the tough part, and that's that, that's one of the reasons why we put the podcast together is to get some more information out there to the parents, to the coaching staff, to the schools who are listening, because you guys, you, hockey needs some medical staff, some more research, some people that are going to go out there and help the players, not for. Yeah, I know we all got to get paid, pay our, pay our bills, et cetera, et cetera, but also to grow the sport in this area. And I think that's one of the reasons why parents don't martic, uh, don't like take their kids and let them play hockey consistently right. is because there's they, they, they know, they're like, well, where's, where's the medical staff here, right. right? And hockey and football get a bad rap for the, the head contact and everything. But I, I have said this on the show times and times again that, you know, Hockey, when you're playing, when you're paying your, your peewee midgets and you're coming up, you're not really doing a lot of head contact there. Now, the head contact comes from you just fell because you don't, you're still right. learning to skate, right? Right. So, but you're not really chucking them in the boards or anything like that just yet, right? And even, even in, in, in the high school level, what, what, what are you allowed to do and what are you not allowed to do? Because it's, so, it's different. Yeah, well, with the, the, the high school league, it, it's full contact, full, full checking. Right. Um, but then they have gotten more strict on their rules regarding head contact, right. uh, hits from behind. So you're going to automatically, if you contact the head, it's a 10-minute penalty. So you'll be in the box for, for the 10-minute the misconduct. Uh, and then I think if you get a couple of those in a game, then you're, you're ejected and right. face a, a suspension. But... Uh, you know, they, it's there's also a kind of it's, it's an unwritten you know gentleman's rule of the game as well because in the the high school league you do have a wide variance of talent okay. where you have very experienced, very talented players, and then you have you know the opposite end of the spectrum as well. Right. And it's uh, it's also co-ed as you know. So if you yeah. have a, a, a girl out there who's a, a freshman girl, 14 years old, going up against a you know 18 year old boy that plays you know for somebody like the Potomac Patriots, right. it could put the, this girl in a very vulnerable position to be right. hit by this kid. So it is very common to see you know people show that kind of respect and pull up on, on things like that. But it's you know. There are, are you know some exceptions to that. So now, wasn't it Chantilly High School about two years ago that had this girl that was playing elite level hockey? She was showing some of the guys out. There's there's some video out there. We, we we'll, we'll see if we can we can come up with it. But she was um, I was working with the PVI uh, school and I was watching her and she was just amazing. And what she was doing, she was out skating some of the boys and some of the some of the players. And I'm like, wow, that, oh, I believe that was it. Pretty good, right? Yeah. I mean, we don't see a lot of that because a lot of the, a lot of the the um, a lot of the, the girls that play hockey are, for the most part, tend to stick to to the all girl leagues, right, right? right? So they don't they don't mix in in the high school area. But um, man, I appreciate you being on the show. It was great. There's a lot of info out there, and I can't wait to keep working with you this season. And um, you know, we'll have you back on the show. See how the season's going. Yeah, see how the players are doing. Um, and uh, you know, hey. You know, we're here, we're in the Fairfax City area, guys. It's, if you wanna reach us, have any questions about injuries, um, even if you're not in the area, send me an email at doctors at sjinstitute.com. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram at Spine Joint Institute. Um, we're also on Facebook and um, love to hear some feedback. Go to our iTunes page and download, send us a review, let us know how we're doing. Send us some questions on what you wanna see on the program. There's a lot of things I'm working on in the background that I wanna to bring to the show and we just gotta get some approval from, um, from um, some of the people I've contacted, but it would be great um, because hey, we're trying to build hockey here in the Northern Virginia, DC area, but also across the nation. You know, we're trying to make sure that the injuries stay low, that we get the respect that we need, and uh, from the chiropractic standpoint, which is what I do, that we're, we're there to help the players recover faster. And that's what chiropractic really really helps with, is helping you recover faster. Now, we, we work together with the athletic trainers. I know at Langley, I've worked together, I've worked with, with the athletic trainer there, as well as some of the orthopedic surgeons. Um, actually, again, Langley's orthopedic surgeon, again, <laughs> I've worked with them too. So it was kind of coincidental that we met and uh, we have this big connection there. Um, but for sure, 
you know, this is where chiropractic fits. I, I, I wholeheartedly feel that you know, chiropractic is on the, on, the, um, on the forefront when it comes to hockey and these type of injuries that we can help boost that, not just, not just the uh, sports performance, but also the ability to recover quicker so that you're not missing a step out there in hockey during your games, right? Thank you for tuning in. Look for us. We're gonna do. Uh, one, we're gonna try to do one episode a week. So look for us to, uh, um, to look for the next episode here coming soon. Thanks again.